Welcome back to the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real-world application development. In this video, I decided to spend a bit more time on the continuous integration process. Specifically, I want to address the multi-app build process. In our last video, we covered how to get a single app, the API, that build up and running. However, we'll need to add some things to get everything else running as well. Instead of waiting until we're ready to build those items as well, I decided to do it all at once in this video. Now, for those of you who subscribe to my Patreon at the $5 per month level or higher, head over to get the source code for today's video. There won't be a lot of changes, but there'll be a couple of tweaks there. Now, for those of you who are new to this project, welcome. If you're just interested in the topic this video covers, I think you'll get a great introduction to the real world setting. If you'd like a little bit more context about this or to start from the beginning, there's a link in the description to the full playlist in order. There's also a link to the phase one course if you want to get this up to speed faster in that and would like the full source code for each step along the way. Either way, I appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Doing so will help spread the word and ensure that more people will be helped by this video. Okay, so let's head on over to Azure DevOps. And in here, let's go to the pipelines. Right now, this pipeline, if we look at it, let's go ahead and edit it. Right now, it just does one build. It builds a solution and it builds everything and the output is this, um, this drop file. Let's go back to the pipelines. Let's open this up and look at, let's do the drop file for this one, the artifact. So you have drop inside there, we have a readme.txt, a command file, some XML, and then a zip file. And we opened that up and saw it's basically all of our API web app, but that's not really what this whole thing's about because it's not just an API. This is, works great for getting continuous integration set up for the API, but there's more to it than that. We also want to build out our, uh, our database project. So we have our TRM data, which is a SQL database. We want to build that out. We also want to build out our UI project, which is a, which is a WPF project. So we really want to have three different outputs from this our API, our database, and our user interface, our WPF project. So let's go ahead and adjust this pipeline. So you edit, and we're gonna make some adjustments in here to do three builds instead of one. Let's start with this build solution. Right now it says build solution. Let's instead say build um, API project. Okay, now it says solution is .sln anywhere in the project, and I can't even click on that. Well, that's because this is what's called a linked property. So we can unlink this by clicking this little uh, link icon here, and we can unlink, and now we can make a modification to it. That just allows us to use basically like a variable that we can use throughout the project. But in this case, it's not helping us. We actually wanna use the ellipsis button and go find just the API's um, CS proj file, okay? The cool thing is now that we have source code in our environment, our repo, we can browse it, find the actual path to our CS proj file and click it. And now it says, okay, it's TRM API slash TRM APIs dot CS proj. Makes our life a little easier. Now we're gonna use the latest version of Visual Studio. We'll use the same um, arguments here. So we'll still deploy to the build, uh, the artifact staging directory. We'll still deploy on build. We'll still package this up as a single file and skip invalid configuration. I think all these will work with our web API deploy, but we'll see. And we'll make sure that's going to work with web API deploy. And if not, then we can make some adjustments, but just to the web project and not have to affect the other projects, okay? So that's the build of our CS proj for our, um, our API project. Now I done the NuGet restore and NuGet restore was on everything is a solution level. So it's gonna restore all the packages, but then just build this CS proj file, okay? Now I'm gonna move this publish artifacts up. So it's gonna publish the artifact from our 
our artifact staging directory. And instead of calling it drop, I'm gonna unlink this. I'm gonna call this the API drop, like so. And now that's the custom named zip file for this particular build. Now we're gonna do is we're gonna add one more task. So I hit the plus button next to agent job. And now what I can do is I can look for, I believe it's delete. There we go, yep, delete files. And I can either hit add or just drag this over where I want it. So what this does, it allows me to delete files from somewhere. So I can say delete files from, and let's grab that artifact staging directory. And we'll say, instead of delete files from, we'll say delete API files and the contents, we're gonna say star star. And what that means is delete all the folders and files in this directory. So what's happening is we're doing a build and the output of that build is, or a publish as well, that output is gonna go into the artifacts directory. This publishes that artifacts directory into a zip file. And then this step here cleans out that artifact directory, kind of resets it because we're gonna do this two more times. Now, normally after you're done a job, that artifact directory gets cleaned out at the end, but we wanna clean it out during the process, not just at the end. So now let's right click on our build API project and say clone task. We're gonna drag it down below delete, or I rename this to be the, um, the SQL project. Uh, let's call it the build SQL project. So build SQL project, we have build API project, now we have build SQL project. It's a different CS proj file. It's gonna be the TRM data, and it's a SQL proj file. And our build arguments, most of them go away. Let's get rid of this whole top line. So we have just the P colon uh, package location equals and the build artifact staging directory. And then I have a space, I'm gonna say slash property. Actually, let's do a, a new line here, just make it cleaner. I won't do it, okay, no problem. Uh, property colon DSP equals, and we'll have in quotes, Microsoft dot data dot tools dot schema dot SQL dot SQL Azure V12 database Make sure I spell it right. Database schema provider. Okay, so what this does is it sets up that we're gonna build this as an Azure SQL version 12 database schema. Remember back when we were doing a publish and our property for a project was set to uh, SQL 2016? And it says we can't publish to an Azure SQL database, uh, a version 12 database. You gotta change your, your target version. And so we change the target version in the project. What this will do is ensure that regardless of what your settings are, this is gonna publish as a Azure SQL version 12 database schema provider. So it's always gonna publish ready to be pushed to Azure SQL, okay? So those are the two arguments for this build. And now what we'll do is after this, we're gonna copy the, or clone the publish. We're gonna drag it down. And we're gonna call this the, um, instead of publish artifact, which this should, this should be publish API. Publish API is fine. This is gonna be publish SQL, and instead of API drop, we're gonna say this is the SQL drop. So it's gonna take whatever's in the, the build artifact staging directory and put it into a different zip file called SQL drop. So we'll have one called API drop, one called SQL drop, 
you can probably guess we'll have another one called WPF drop. But first, let's clone this delete API files, drag it down below, and we'll call this delete SQL files. And take a copy off the end. But the same same command is delete everything in that folder. And then we're going to clone the build SQL project. We'll call this build WPF project. And we're going to change the output here, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, file we're building to be the desktop UI, TRM desktop UI.CS proj file. And we're going to take off this build property um, that we don't need but for the SQL database. That's not, doesn't apply here. It's just, hey, put the output in the, the um, staging directory. Okay. So that's all it's going to do. And then we're going to do another publish, sort of clone this, drag it down below. And this is going to be publish WPF. And we'll call this the WPF drop zip file. So now we have a third zip file. We don't need to have a copy of the delete because we're no longer worrying about those output files. Okay, so we've done now our, our builds, our three builds, and we haven't done anything with our tests or our published symbol paths. We'll probably, in fact, let's get rid of those for now. Let's just hit remove. No reason to have them right now. If when we do bring them back, we'll have to put them in, in various spots since we are doing a, a multi-stage build. We're building different projects. We might even build this twice. We build a solution and then run the unit tests and then if they all pass, then we'll do the individual builds of the projects. So we'll see. But for right now, this is all we need where we have our NuGet restore and then we're gonna build our API project, build our SQL project and build our WPF project. That's a lot of changes. Let's make sure it works. Okay, so we'll set that running. So now it's currently in process while it's running. Let's just open it up so it's um, open and available to us once we come to it. Let's go back to our, our SQL project. Or I'm sorry, our, our Visual Studio project. We do have an outstanding um, issue to work on. Let's go to our work items. And I believe it's work item number 24. So let's go to... Um, not following my activity. Yeah, there we go. So there is one in here, update NuGet packages related to release version. Okay, so this was actually brought up from a comment where the uh, viewer said, hey, you got some NuGet packages. Let's go look at some of them um, where they're kind of like pre-release versions. So you have a bunch of these versions where they are preview releases. So let's go ahead and let's go to updates actually. And this is gonna list all the different things that could be updated. Let's review them all. I wanna do an update all, but I wanna make sure that before I hit update that I've reviewed them all to make sure there's no major updates. All right, so this is version 3.1.0 preview one, and there's version 3.1.1. That's fine, same for this. This is version five, release candidate four. This is version five, the full version. Okay, that's fine. It's so going down, that's, that's pretty much all we have here. I don't see any differences. Um, it looks like they're all the same. Uh, we do have a loading dialog here, which seems to indicate there's more coming, but I don't think there is. So let's switch off and switch back and see if that loading goes away. It does. Um, and it looks like that's all there is. So I'm gonna do this, update. And this will update all those packages to the latest version, the latest um, approved version, the latest stable version. And now it should be we have no updates. We have them all updated. And let's go through and make sure that our library doesn't have anything like that. So updates, we do have some updates here. Um, 
3.0 versus 3.1.1. It's a minor release. That's a minor release. Um, that's a major release. I don't want to do that one. I'm thinking I'm going to leave these alone for now until I can actually um, verify them better because that might involve a little more code. Let's go to the WPF project and look at those dependencies for our updates. I don't think we have any here. We'll find out. And then we'll also go to our library and do the same thing. So our library has one update and it's system.configuration.configurationManager. We'll leave that alone. Nothing for our user interface. So it's just those those preview releases that I wanted to move to the major or the, the actual release. So now that we've done that, let's do a, let's run the project, make sure it all runs. So it's gonna take a little bit longer this time since it's kind of recompiling some things and bringing some things down. But once it's done, it'll launch and hopefully nothing has changed on our application. Still seems to launch just fine. If we hit login, it goes right to the um, to the page. It still works the way we intend it to. We go to user account management. We can still do the same exact things as before. So that all looks like we are operating properly. So I don't think there's any major changes that affected our API. So I'm gonna call that a success. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to changes and I'm going to stage this. I'm gonna associate it with number 24, which is that update NuGet packages to release. And um, actually let's go to our, our um, work items and actually change that as well. So number 24, I'm gonna mark that as complete. Go back to my changes. And I'm going to say um, completed update. Well, let's say updated. Updated new get API new get packages to release versions. All right. And I'm going to say some packages were on the preview release preview version or a um, release candidate version. They, these have been updated. Okay, I'm gonna commit stage, but not actually push this yet. So if you go to sync, you'll see there's one ready to go out, but I don't wanna push it yet. I'm gonna go back to our, our uh, job. Notice we, our job is done. And if we look at the, it says to publish, that's interesting. Let's go to uh, to here, it says to published. It says API drop, which that's correct, but I'm not seeing the rest of them being published. So let's go back here and make sure I'm looking at the correct, um, the correct version. So this is, um, 18.1, that's the, that's the one I just did eight minutes ago. So let's hit edit on this and find out. Let's first of all, just look at it. So we are publishing what's here. We are deleting what's here. We are doing a, a new build of our SQL project and it's a publishing it to that same location. And then we're publishing that to SQL drop and then we're deleting those files and we're publishing to that same location and we are uh, zipping that up in a WPF drop. So it looks right. Uh, it looks like it should be operating correctly. Um, I don't see where there's an issue. We have it, we are tagging it. Um, I don't see anything in here that, that seems off. So let's go back to the pipeline here um, and let's, whoops, there we go. Um, recently run pipelines. There's also all. So I click on this and I'm gonna click on the actual job and let's look at what this actually did. 
It says successful, but I click on it. Let's look at delete the files. So it deleted the API files. It says it did it. There's a warning used cipherly for counter mode of, and I'm not sure what that means, but um, it should have worked. Then we're doing the publish of our SQL task. And it looks like we've got a build right here. Let's kind of zoom in a little bit. A build of our DAC pack file seems to have worked, um, which that's what you're expecting for an output. Now let's go to publish SQL. Warning, this directory is empty. So it's not outputting correctly that directory since it's empty. So D colon slash A slash one slash A. So our publish here, copy to output directory copying from um, to D slash A slash one slash S, which is interesting. Um, it's not publishing to the slash A that it's expecting. So it's not published in the right location. Let's look at the published WPF. It also says that directory is empty. Nothing will be added to the WPF drop. So it appears as though, even though it says that it's publishing, it's not publishing to the correct place. So let's edit the pipeline and let's look at the build SQL project. It says build artifact staging directory, which up here, we're, we're publishing to build artifact staging directory. So it appears to be built into the same location. I'm wondering if it has to do with the clean here. So clean, what it's gonna do is it's going to not make this an incremental build. It's going to um, rebuild everything essentially. I think that might be the issue here. Um, it, that's a that's a assumption, I guess you could say. So let's assume that might be the case. I'm gonna hit save though. Nope, I'm gonna save in queue. Once we have this working, then I will do my push of my source code and make sure that in fact, it does trigger that build automatically. So let's go over our agent job and we'll watch as this runs through. In fact, I'll probably pause the video. No reason for you to stare at a screen as you know, text just scrolls on the screen, but um, it appears as though the Nougat Restore is working fine. Um, I'll watch this as we go through and may I'll unpause it halfway through. Okay, so it says that it all worked, but if we look down here, uh, publish SQL, it still says that it was empty, nothing we add to the artifact SQL drop. So that's not right. Let's go back here and say, edit pipeline again, and I think that um, I think I know the problem. So clean is good, that's fine, but it's package location that's the problem. So I'm looking at the different um, outputs or different uh, arguments, and it should be out directory. So out dir. All right, and the same thing for our WPF project. It should be out directory um, for our location. So the, the first one uses the uh, package location, but that's because the package location we're already deploying on build. And so we're saying, instead of uh, outputting to the, the bin directory and then copying to the output directory, we're just going to publish our package to the staging directory directly. So that's, that's kind of the difference there. So I think that's going to solve our problem. And this is where you're going to get into yet another run and yet another five minutes of waiting. Now you don't because I pause the video and I'll wait and we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, if you get stuck on a build and you just can't figure out what's going on, there is, when you do a manual build, there is a checkbox that says to add, to debug the build. And that's going to give you a whole lot more information as it goes so you can kind of see even more detail about what's happening. So that's a possibility as the next step. If this doesn't work, I think it will work though. I think that that output directory is what we're missing. All right, so we're gonna run this again, make sure it runs. And then once we do, we'll come back over here to our Visual Studio and we're gonna push this up and make sure that it triggers a new build. All right, so it's currently building the SQL project. 
We'll see what happened with our publish. It looks like our publish actually published something to a drop. So it looks like it's going to work. So it's just um, building the WPF project, actually just publishing the WPF project, which is um, done now. And it looked like that published as well. So I think we have a winner. So four items published. We have three different drops. We have the API drop. And inside there we have that zip file. That's a 16 megabyte file that contains our web application, our API. We have a SQL drop, which has the DAC pack and a DLL. That's it. And the DAC pack is really the important one. That's what we use to deploy. And then we have the WPF project, which has a whole bunch of DLLs and then our TRM desktop UI.exe file. That's our executable. So we've got all three different builds going. So they're all working. They're creating separate drop files. So that's how you do multiple projects with different outputs. Now, before we talk through it anymore, let's go back to pipelines. Notice that this is currently just sitting here. It's not doing anything. I'll even click on it. These are the builds. Um, so I'm going to do this push. Notice there's no builds running. If I do the push and immediately minimize, you'll see in just a second that it should pop up. It may take a refresh. I'm not positive um, because sometimes it, it doesn't actually capture it. If you hit refresh though, there we go. It's there. So it automatically triggered that build. I didn't need to refresh in order for it to trigger. I just need to refresh in order to see that it triggered. So that's the difference. Um, but let's talk through this pipeline a little bit. In some ways, this may seem inefficient because we've got a build of our one project and a publish, and then a build of another project and a publish, and a build of a third project and a publish. And in fact, if you bring in unit testing, like I said, we may build the entire solution and then run our unit tests. Or maybe we'll just build our, our uh, unit test project or projects and then run those. But we'll probably do the whole solution just in case we have multiple projects with unit tests in them. So it may look like we're doing a lot of build work that we could probably you know, make more efficient. However, this is how you do a build process. This way we kept things separate and, and kind of isolated from each other so that you're not publishing your API code or API DLLs and other things with your EXE project. And you're definitely not putting those, those files with your DAC pack file, okay? Or even worse, distributing your DAC pack file with your EXE files because your, your user interface, your EXE file, your uh, WPF project, that shouldn't have access to your database at all. So if you're passing the schema down, you're kind of giving access to not the same database, but the database structure. So that wouldn't be a good thing. So separating these out will be helpful because then we can deploy just one piece at a time and have multiple different deployment scenarios because our deployments aren't gonna be the same for these three projects. When we publish something, we're going to probably deploy the API every time. That's what I typically do, is I trigger the API or a web app to deploy every time. But a desktop app, we don't want to deploy it if it's the same version. We only want to deploy it if it's a different version. So therefore, we're going to um, figure out what to do there. Do we always have a new version, but it's a dev version, and we only do certain things with, with um, production versions? Or do we say, you know what, we're not going to do continuous deployment for our EXE. We're going to have a, a manual process that gets kicked off intentionally. So those are the kind of questions we're going to have to answer. But since they're separated, we can answer them separately. We don't have to deploy the database every time if we don't want to. We don't have to deploy the API every time if we don't want to. All right. I think those make sense to do every time because it's not going to hurt anything. With the desktop application, it might hurt something. We don't necessarily want to have 30 versions show up in a day for our, our WPF project if they're just new builds. We only want those for like insiders or alpha testers. We want to have only real major, ver major or minor version changes show up on our website as a new version of our application. Okay, so we'll have to address that and figure that out. Um, as we go, but we can do that again per project 
or per project output type versus the entire solution. Remember, the solution is just a bucket. And in fact, we could have created three different pipelines, but I don't want to do that because then it jams things up and we don't get some of the benefits. Like our NuGet restore happens once. Our unit testing would happen once for all the projects versus these things, which would be independent. So I don't want to do testing three times. I don't want to do NuGet restore three times. And I don't want to have to wait on a lot of things because when you kick things off, it's going to create, if it had three different uh, pipelines for building, then it would have the first one run and the other two would be queued. And then when you, if you had continuous deployment on, it might kick off a deployment job. That's going to be queued then fourth in line or now third in line because the first one's done, the next two builds come and then you've got a deployment coming and maybe two deployments or three. So it's, it kind of stack things up and make things kind of jam have a log jam in our, our CI CD process. So I like this where it's one job, but it does multiple things. So let's just make sure that in fact, our pipeline did work. Um, so it looks like that latest job, uh, did deploy. We have our, um, it looks like four artifacts. That's good. So we have our label and then our three different pieces. So, we're all set. And if we go back to our boards, we can see that we have the, um, the fix in for the NuGet packages. And if we look at this, we'll see that it's associated with um, a couple of things. It's associated with, let's zoom in here. I'll zoom in this way. It's associated with a commit. So this is a commit. And then up here, it's associated with a build. So we now can track this prob or this uh, this issue through a commit and through a build, and the fact that it succeeded. So next, we can also track it through our deployment as well, if we were to deploy this issue, which we will. So we'll be able to track all those steps for this one issue. So it's kind of cool. Okay. So and there's the links right there. You can see uh, the commits and the builds in case there's more than one of each. All right, so with that, I think that we're done with this step. I, I promised you last time that we get to continuous deployment, I decided to hold off and do this multi-step build first, just to make sure we're, we're totally good on our continuous integration. Now the next video uh, really is gonna be continuous deployment of our API. Depending on time, we might do the database as well. We will see, but we'll at least do our API in the next video for continuous deployment. Okay. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.